Good morning, folks. Let's get in the mood with a hundred thousand kilometers of plasma in a rope cresting the northeastern limb. It was a relatively calmer day, 93 million miles away on our star. Solar flaring has dropped considerably since last week, but the sunspots are surging back now. Got development all over, and it's not just new spots, but complexity. Finally, positive umbra shows up in the north. Baby spots born beta down south out ahead of what turns out to be a large and fierce looking active region. Focus is on the incoming limb where it appears most of the umbral field strength is. All those bright loops. Now in addition to the sunspots, we've got a ton of plasma filaments. Each dark rope is hovering over the solar surface, suspended by magnetic forces. Each is an eruption threat, and it just so happens that one might be destabilizing now. By tonight, this one may have either erupted or broken form and collapsed. This morning, we are taking another speed ramp in the solar wind, peaking over 700 kilometers per second, along with a rise in solar wind density. We've watched the folk ring current and electron densities go from normal to major fluctuations as Earth's system as a whole is still very weak from that G4 storm. We already took a level 2 magnetic storm this morning. Primary coronal hole is visible turning away in the center. Dark in 211 angstroms. That's a positive opening with a negative coronal hole to the south of it around the pole. The coronal fields will allow that polar coronal hole to be dominant in the IMF shortly, readying to deliver another negative space influence while pumping out very powerfully as it is known to do. It's got top force levels. We had moderate seismicity only in the last day, from northern Africa to South America and across in the western Pacific. Interestingly, the top two quakes out there occurred just 10 minutes apart and smack in the middle of them in both time and geographic location. A 7.1 reading showed up, but no official reports like this came in from the area. So with a strong negative corona hole opening on the way, a quick sunspot ramp up now, more geomagnetic storm activity and the planets sort of lining up as well, we are in for another earthquake watch coming up this week. Top story today comes out of the Max Planck Institute, where some of the best of the best make big strides. Turns out the climatologists have made a huge error in calculating how much effect aerosols have on temperature forcing. This could account for a large portion of the gap between the global warming predictions and what we've actually seen taking place. In that same vein, little history on the Arctic sea ice. In 2012, there were record lows. But 2013 and 2014 saw up to a 50% recovery during some months. And then in early 2015, here we're seeing a major heating event up north occurred as it dumped all its cold down on the eastern U.S., and the ice up there is at record lows once more. Of course, the situation would not be hilarious if the Antarctic wasn't getting ready to break high ice marks for the third year in a row. As it breaks upward, the records begin to fall. Also, southwestern Russia is getting dozens of accounts of strange lights and events during a calm weather night. They saw odd sky flashes, there were even UFO reports, and the electricity began cutting out locally on the ground. This was on March 17th. You remember, the worst magnetic storm of the solar cycle, when solar plasma kicked our butts and plasma waves rippled through our atmosphere. Methinks we got an explanation, yeah? Bit of housekeeping. If you missed it, our first conference for the observers has opened registration. You can check out the link either below this video on YouTube or at the top of suspiciousobservers.org. Website members, also don't forget about yesterday's Fly on the Wall podcast. Trevor will have another one ready soon as well in his series. Yesterday's convergence cresting Eastern Australia did a number on them. Today we've got yet another cyclone to watch. Nathan in the north, but now we got Reuben to the east as well. A low at New Zealand is developing too, and a big convergence is cutting through this area here. You know where to look for the storms, and you know where you're going to find them. We've got big lows, east and west. East is a snowstorm while the west drives moisture onshore and into the center of the landmass, including to this low in the north and its convergence. And of course, thunderstorm warnings down south tonight will be the strongest of the year so far. Got a low down there. Keep alert as spring is coming in fast with tornadoes likely in the next three days. In Europe, we see a long convergence, actually stretches more than 2,000 miles, which is very odd because it's over land. 
and of course we have the stronger more confined convergence north of that near the Norwegian coastline two convergences two main areas bringing together the clouds for a sky party I want weather shares from Norway if possible you've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close eyes open no fear it's 605 a.m. Eastern time and that's the news be safe everyone